At ChemCon Asia 2015 in Hong Kong we already talked about notification in China. A complex process of many ifs and thens before you reach your goal. Notification of your chemical in China. And then finally you have reached your destination and your chemicals can enter the Chinese market. But also post notification navigation is not easy. Notification is not the end of your obligation but the start of chemicals management and monitoring work to ensure compliance. Joining us on this road trip of post notification in China, Xiaoyan Liu and Vincent Wang. Xiaoyan Liu works at the Solid Waste and Chemicals Management Center of MEP and among others he was very active on the revision of the new chemical substance notification guidance. Vincent Wang works as a regulatory affairs manager at the American chemical company Millican Chemical. Before we start with the post notification part, a short question on the latest news on the revised new chemical substance notification guidances. Xiaoyan, what's the latest status? It's really hard to tell the exact time. Uh, we have been negotiating with uh, the Division of Chemical MEP and uh, we will continue to promote the publishing. Okay, and what can we expect from this revision? Can you reveal already a little bit? Because the public, because the revised guidance has been issued yet, so um, there's still a possibility of change. Um, but what we can expect is a reduction of data requirements. A reduction, always yeah. nice. Um, as I said, so you notified your substance and now we're focused on the post notification after the company successfully required the notification status. What are then their next steps uh, they have to do uh, for MEP to be on the market? Yes, there is some work still uh, need to do. And the first, uh, the notifier should communicate the registration information with the downstream users and keep the document and um, he should um, submit re any reports and uh, activity reports. Um, besides, uh, he uh, should submit report any information that uh, showed new, hazard new hazardous properties and uh, he should accept on-site inspection and the supervision. Vincent, from industry perspective, what are your major issues now uh, to deal with the post notification part? Well, after you successfully got the approval, I think there are two major parts of it. First is the, to manage the information, pass on through the supply chain. And you know, most of the chemical companies in China, they have a very complicated supply chain. There's a lot of small and medium customers. There's very complicated dealer systems. So how to make sure all those risk control measures and information was passed through those supply chains and were successfully uh, enforced or f practiced uh, in those customers. That's uh, very important. And the second part is, as uh, Xiaojian said, there's, uh, if there's any new information founded about the substance, if there's any new applications developed, they should report uh, accordingly with the new information or the new risk control measures. Okay. Um, Shadian, what is the current status of listing of new chemical substances on the existing inventory? It's not that a group of 31 substances has been listed into the ICSC last year. So all these substances were registered in number 17 decree. So, and uh, another 10 substances was revealed at the same time. So, but their classification need to uh, be revised. So there are these substances will lining up uh, for uh, listing and uh, we, we hope the procedure of the listing can be easier to operate but uh, honestly the procedure still need to be confirmed with MEP. Okay, Vincent, how are companies preparing to get uh, substances on the existing inventory? Yeah, actually there are two cases, right? First is that if you just finished your new chemical substance notifications, you need to immediately prepare yourself for the first import, to submit any imports and all those uh, related requ uh, required report. And the other part is for those uh, previously notified substances, you need to prepare yourself with uh, the actual uh, activity reports, how the substance was used actually in the industry and those reports and the the last thing is you have to notice that uh, once the substance is listed all those information will be come public and you need to manage all the business informations your your IPs and all those relevant uh, rights so again can you tell us more about uh, MEP's uh, ideas uh, on changing the regulation for existing chemicals uh, okay uh, according to the 30s five years uh, 
Ecological Environmental Protection Plan, and MEP is carrying out screen, hazard screening for and risk assessment of for a number of existing chemicals. And in order to control the hair pollution caused by the EDCs, the endocrine so, disruptor chemicals. Yes, uh, MEP is carrying out uh, investigation of the manufacture and the use of the EDCs. Vincent, is the listing on the inventory the final step and then you're done or is there more to do afterwards? Well, uh, as, as we have been going through this discussion, there's still a lot of responsibilities about uh, uh, reporting, about uh, the monitoring. So that's absolutely not the end. It's just a brand new start of another phase of work. Talking about other phases, um, uh, early 2017, the uh, local Shanghai EPA, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, they conducted inspections to check enterprises. That was something new. They checked if they had the right certificates, for instance. Is this uh, a pilot that will be rolled out over the rest of China? Um, well, uh, as far as I know, the inspection was planned and conducted by the local EPA in Shanghai uh, unilaterally. So, um, uh, not, uh, not authorized or joint conducted by MEP. So, and uh, now, uh, no more pilot area was hard to make this plan for inspections. So, but I think these actions could be uh, helpful for the authorities to uh, know the actual situation of the new chemical substance in China and uh, to, uh, it's helpful to promote the revision of the regulation and uh, to make new management uh, requirements. Okay, and, and do we know anything on the outcome? I mean, they check the certificates of manufacturers, importers, etc. I mean, do we know how well everybody scored? Oh, oh, sorry, I don't know the results. You the, know, Vincent? The, 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 Not yet. <laughs> Not yet, okay. Yeah. Uh, but what we do know, Vincent, is that uh, the inspections by the EPA uh, of Shanghai were carried out together with a third party. I know that some industries had some concern about it because that would yeah, uh, get CBI information, confidential business information, out in the open, potentially at least not to the government only. Um, can you share that with us? The well, concerns? Yes, well, the, the uh, CBI protection has been always uh, interesting and important topics for both the company and the authorities, especially in those uh, uh, law enforcement, there is a lot of uh, aspects to it. Uh, but I think uh, in order to uh, really achieve a good protection of the CBI, I think uh, we need a mutual uh, efforts from both authority side and the company side. So I think uh, uh, in the future we'll have to closely work with authority to make sure that uh, the, the procedure is uh, considering all those aspects. Okay, sounds good. And I think it's also good to follow up in other regions. Uh, I mean, as a compliance driven company, you're happy to show your certificates, I would say. Um, again, a lot of useful information on regulatory obligations that will help these compliant driven companies to navigate on the post-notification path. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.